we've become used to British stage winners on the tour over the past few years. Although really what we've become used to is Mark Cavendish winning. But this year he's had company. After he won the first bunch sprint on stage two, Chris Froome won the first mountain stage at La Planche des Belles Filles as Bradley Wiggins took the yellow jersey. And two days later, Wiggins won in yellow in the first long time trial. Of the four members of Britain's five-man Olympic team in the Tour, David Miller, the only non-Sky rider, was perhaps beginning to feel a bit left out. But freed from Garmin team duties with rider Hejadan out of the race and spurred on by the calendar, he got in the right break on stage 12. David Miller's group of five here still showing no signs of attacking each other but the road is undulating all the way up till it finally kicks to the finish today it's a strong man's finish it is a very difficult strong man's finish but there's so many swings and turns and roundabouts it's going to make it quite precarious on the running towards the finish miller will be very attentive now and he's the only rider apart from martinez who's been in a situation like this at the kill for a stage of the tour of france martinez riding his ninth tour Miller has won three stages throughout his career, one of those from a group like this in Bézier. Miller will hope that he gets the victory. Well, there's almost eight kilometres difference between the yellow jersey group, the main field this afternoon, and the breakaway group of five riders. But still, Bradley Wiggins needs to ride at the front end of the peloton because there is always the possibility of a crash, there's always the possibility of a split in the main field, and if that happens, you lose time very, very quickly. Well, they're dropping down into the centre of the city of Annonay, but then they will start to climb up for the last uh, three and a half kilometres, and that's when it starts to get tricky, Phil. And now, surely, Paul, they've got to hit each other. Well, there's the move by Ego and Martinez on the slope, and they haven't responded. Miller has. Uh, that was a little false one. He just checked to see where they were, Martinez, and now he's seen that Miller very, very attentive. Miller's chased him down. Watch out for Kivilowski, he's closed the gap, five together again, Miller's swung off, checking now, this is where the cat and mouse starts, and that's the time for, no, it isn't the time for Igor Martinez. Cyril Gauthier looks like a man who could be a very good sprinter, he doesn't have very many references, only won two victories in his career, the last one, the Tour of Adélie back in 2010, but he's zigzagging about at the back <laughs> end of the line, and he obviously is a man who's got a bit of an explosive punch, and he's waiting to see which line he's going to follow. Look at him there. If he wins this, it'll be the third win in a row for Europe Car and yeah. for France. It would be incredible results. Uh, the fourth win for France, but the third, yes, from Europe Car. You're absolutely right. We'll see as they now ease back on the climb. A little rise is topped here. They are waiting for someone to make a move. As we gaze down from the helicopter, time is running out. Three and a half kilometres to go, and there is the next attack. It's coming from the Croatian rider, Kisilovski, who's launched. Immediately it's the mountain biker, Perro after him, and then Miller. Well, Kisilovski hasn't won a race either, Phil, since 2010. They're all very nervous now. They know that there's only about two miles to go to the finish, three and a half kilometres. I still think that Gauthier is looking very, very dangerous. They're going to have to do something to try and dislodge him because he looks like a real puncher when it comes down to the finish. Miller, though, I have to say, at 35 years of age in first position, is being very, very attentive to all of these little flurries of attacks. And maybe that's a sign of great confidence. After 211 kilometres in the lead, any one of these deserves the victory, but sadly it can only go to one, and it's a stage of the Tour de France. They'll dine out on a victory in Annonay forever for the man who gets it. Well, that's the important thing to remember. You don't get this situation. Happens very often. Normally, when a breakaway goes clear in the Tour de France, I would say <laughs> 99 times out of 100 it gets caught. Today is the success. Miller is in first position. He's been here before. This is almost like the run into Bézier when he won way back in 2002. Three kilometres to go, we've slowed down because they've no worry about the whereabouts of the peloton. They're now at nine minutes and 52 seconds. Kizilofti has launched an attack and he's down to David Miller to close it down. The others are chasing, but it looks to me as though Gauthier is caught a little bit at the back. Well, Miller straight onto the wheel of Kizilofsky in the turquoise jersey of Timo Stana. Perro is right onto the back wheel, so too is Egoi Martinez back. Perro now, the mountain biker, goes over the top in the white jersey. 
And now it is uh, Jean-Christophe Perrault has launched the attack. Miller is trying to reach him because the others are struggling. It doesn't look like it, but this is quite a hard climb. And now it's going to be up to Kizilovsky to try and respond. Miller has almost got his back wheel well, onto Perrault. As we're looking for two kilometres to go, they might have snapped the elastic there, and Miller has got across. The sprinter, Gauthier, has seen the danger. He's had to launch an attack, and Martinez is willing to go with him. But it's hard to nail it back, though, once you've let the move go at the end of a race like this, Phil, at two and a half kilometres to go. If you let the gap go, you're not on the wheel. It's very difficult to nail it back. Miller's going to have to somehow coax Jean-Christophe Perrault in front of him, and he's got to do it in the next kilometre. Well, he won't do it for the moment, Phil, because he wants to consolidate on the difference between himself and these riders behind, because it's still only 50 metres. Those two leaders cannot play cat and mouse just yet. They've got to get into the finishing straight, into the last 500 metres with a good advantage before they try and figure out who's going to take the first position, who's going to take second in the sprint for the line. The three chasers can see the quarry, but I'm not sure they can get across now. This is uphill. And don't worry about the race behind, there'll be about another 12 minutes before they finish. It's about which one of these two wins the Tour de France stage today. They are concerned, though, Phil, about the three riders just behind them, because if they allow them to come back now, these guys have left too much energy on the road. If they get caught by the three chasers, then they may well lose their chance of victory. Now, as they come up to the walls, the finish now... Are these three going to be desperate? Kizilowski looks as though he's going to try again. Well, this is when you've got to be a hard man. This is when you've got to get the poker face on. You've got to play that game of poker properly. For the moment, though, Miller's happy to sit in first place. It's the tempting moment now. The cards are on the table. Who's got the full house as Miller makes the right bend? He's, remember, we do have this roundabout in the last 400 metres. Miller has got to keep the tempo. The way he's riding, he is confident that when this man jumps behind him, he can handle him. David Miller looking for a fourth stage win in the Tour de France. Staring out at Jean-Christophe Perrault, who will wait and wait and wait. The reason being, he I don't think he's a very, very good sprinter. Well, he's not got any pedigree from sprinting, but this is now one man against another. It's two, two riders looking. You can see Ego and Martin is trying to catch 200 metres to go. This is going to be a short sprint. Now Perrault there starts. He goes. There he goes now, Miller has got to wind that gear for the moment, it's advantage pedal, but now Miller is turning the gear. David Miller is uh, going to the line and he gets it for Great Britain. Remember, he's going to go to the Olympic, but this time it's for the American Garmin team. David Miller gets his fourth historical stage win of the Tour de France. He did that with such panache and remember, it was Miller's attack on the way down the Col de Granier that started the break that won the day and for the Scots it was his victory. David Miller, you've done it. You've waited, you've waited a good few years to make that kind of a statement again on the Tour de France, haven't you? Yeah, well, I mean, it's... Uh, I say sometimes when bad luck happens, it actually turns into good luck. Because the last few years I've been in a disposition of the team. I haven't had the liberty to do things like that. But because we lost our GC hopes and I've been allowed to just do what I want, so... I've taken, taken advantage of it. Time after time we've seen you in breaks and it hasn't quite worked out. I think of Barcelona in 2009 and, and that kind of ilk, but uh, you got it perfectly tactically today, didn't you? I was determined. I was just saying to Mariah before I... As soon as I got in the break, I was just, I'm going to win today, I'm going to win today, I'm going to win today. I was just, in my head, I, had, I just gave myself no options and it was, uh, I was going to do whatever it took. Two attacks from Kizilovsky, did they worry you? I mean, they, or did they play perfectly into your hands ultimately? Uh, and now I'd already decided that I was going to go after every single attack. I, was, I knew I could win the sprint, so my tactic was to just shut everything down. And so uh, that's what I did. And on the 50, 45th anniversary of Tom Simpson's death as well. Yeah, I mean, that's particularly poignant, I think, especially after where I, what I've been through. An ex-doper who's, who's now clean and, and who loves his sport. And I think I'm very proud to have done it today because uh, I think uh, we mustn't forget Tommy's memory and what happened and also what this sport's been through and where we are now. I think we're, we're in the, we're the cleanest we've ever been and with Brad leading the tour and Chris in second and, and now four British stage wins. I mean, we're clean riders and we're dominating the Tour de France. You're up on the podium again, well done. Thank you. Eloquence unaffected by 226 kilometres of hard racing, David Miller chose the tour's longest day for his first stage win in nine years.